In this next module, we're going to rig our robot. Before we jump into that though, let's learn about a new kind of deformer that we're going to be using in this process. So, in a new version of Maya, under the rigging menu, you'll notice that we have a couple of different items up here that are not in other menus, notably skeleton and skin. This is the deforming system that we're going to use when we're rigging any character. So let's look at the skeleton options. Under skeleton, we have the options to create joints. Now if I click create joints and click in my 3D space, you're going to see that I'm making a series of these circles or these spheres with um, a cone that kind of points to the next. You'll also notice if I hit enter that all of these are connected. If I go over to my channel box, if I go over to my outliner, you'll see that I have joint one, joint two, joint three, joint four. What we're creating is a hierarchy of objects that actually don't render. So although we can see them here, if I rendered this scene, it would look like it's completely empty. So this hierarchy works like any other hierarchy. If I grab joint one and rotate it, joint two, three, and four go with it. But if I grab joint three, and rotate it, only joint three and four move. Joints two and one are not affected. And you'll notice that this is how a lot of skeletal structures work as well. So if we were to go to our front view and I click create joints and let's make these four joints this is very similar to shoulder, elbow, wrist, and we would call this maybe wrist end or hand or possibly finger. Let's just do that. And just like that, um, if I rotate at my shoulder, my elbow, and my hand go with me. And if I rotate at my elbow, my hand and my finger go with me. So this is the system that we're going to use to, to rig our characters. Now, on top of this being a hierarchy system, joints are also a deformer. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and I will create a cylinder. I'll quickly scale this up um, let's go ahead and go to my perspective view, make this a little more narrow. And I'm going to also add some additional subdivisions in the height. I'm going to create two different versions of this. So I'll create one that has a whole bunch of different subdivisions in the height. I'll hit control D and move that duplicate over. And then I'll make one where there are no subdivisions in the height, just so we can see how this works. Now, in the side view, this is the one that is only one polygon tall. So you'll see that if I grab an edge on this and move it, that moves the entire length of the object. Versus this object over here, if I grab an edge, um, I'm able to just focus in on this one edge here. It doesn't affect some of the rest of this area. Um, so just like any other object, if I were to grab these vertices and try to bend this, that straight line is going to, to cause that kind of interpolation. Versus this, I could rotate small elements, little bits at a time, and slowly start to get the effect of this object curving. So so it's important to recognize that we need to have enough information on our object in order to get this seemingly smooth curve here. So let's let's undo all of that and get back to sort of our normal objects again. So again, 
a joint chain is a deformer as well as a hierarchy system. So if I go to skeleton, create joints, and I'll hit four so I can see through it, and I click here, and then I hold shift to make sure my joint is staying locked in up and down space, and I just click this a few more times, and hit enter. So now I have this joint chain. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this joint chain and move it over here as well. Control D, and I'll move this over here. So we have two different um, sections. Now, although this is a deformer, currently it's not connected to this piece of mesh. So if I rotate it, it doesn't affect the mesh at all. What I have to do first is select the mesh and then select the joint chain. And then I can do a and then I can do a skinning. No. And then I can skin the object. So skinning means that we are going to make a piece of mesh react to these joints as if they're the skeleton for that. So if I go to skin and choose bind skin, I'll choose my skinning options, um, you'll see that there's a lot of different options. For now we're just going to use the default options. So I am just going to hit bind skin. Now you'll see that the joint chain changed colors, but if I select any of these joints now and rotate them, you'll see that I get deformation on my object. So I'm able to pose this in some very specific ways now. However, if I did the same thing with this joint chain, skin, bind skin, no matter what I do to these objects, to these joints here, I'm still just deforming this one object that is one polygon tall. So when you were modeling your objects, if you need a bend somewhere in the mesh, you're going to need to have additional spans and additional edge loops in order to get a deformation on that. Like We can't bend a single edge if you want to get the um, impression that an a bend is happening, then we have to have multiple edges that change over time. So I want to show you one more element of this tool. I will delete all of this. I'll go ahead and create a new cylinder, add some subdivisions in this, um, height, scale this up. And from my front view, I will go ahead and make a little bit of a bend in this object already. Something like this. So when you were modeling your object, hopefully you modeled your knees a little bit bent. If you didn't, before we rig, you may want to go back and put just a little bit of a bend in your uh, character's knee. I'll show you why. If I go to Skeleton, Create Joints, and I click here, and I go ahead and add the bend in this joint, and hit Enter, Maya recognizes that there's a rotation in this joint toward this axis. So we can actually get some automatic interpolation with this. So if I were to skin this, skin, bind skin, we can get the automatic bend that we would expect. Right? But there's another way of manipulating this. As we are looking at it right now, we are having to manipulate from the top of the hierarchy down. So if I needed to move the end of this piece of mesh, I would have to rotate joint one and joint two to get that exactly where I wanted it to be. It took two different rotations to get this end joint to be right here. What I'm going to introduce you to is called IK, and that stands for inverse kinematics. What you're seeing here we call FK, and that stands for forward kinematics, and it's forward because we are going forward down the hierarchy. 
inverse kinematics would mean that I could grab the point that I wanted to change, the end of this object, and just place it wherever I wanted. Now I could kind of do that now, but I'm going to get a bad result. Right? So the way IK works is if I go to Skeleton, Create IK Handle, and I'm going to look at my Options box, I want to make sure that this is set to Rotation Plane Solver. I also want to make sure that it's set to Sticky. And what that means is that the end of the IK will stay in place. So if I click Sticky, I have to click the top of my hierarchy, which is Joint 1, and then I have to click the end of my hierarchy, which in this case is Joint 3. When I click it, it creates this line from one to the other. You also see it creates an IK handle one. If I go in here and look in this in perspective, you'll also see that there's an angle pointing forward on this. But the most important point about the functionality of this IK is if I move it, if I hit W and select this IK handle, when I move this around, I can change this end point and point it wherever. Now, what you'll notice is that little arrow is pointing forward. Under the IK, we also have this option for roll and twist. So let's just adjust the twist and you'll see that what that is doing is aiming the knee. So if we're thinking of this as a leg, that would be the knee and this would be the ankle. And I can now move my ankle around and place it wherever I want to. However, the most important part about this is not that I can move the ankle, but that I could make the ankle stay in place if I needed it to. In the case of a character walking, our hips may be moving around all over the place, but we need our ankle to stay stuck to the floor. And in this case, if I move the hips around, my ankle will stay in place. And that would allow me to animate our character walking, and then when I put the foot on the ground, it will stay in place as we move forward. So IK is very useful in this regard, but there is something you have to be careful with when creating IK. When we created that bend in the knee on the joint, you realize that it was pointing perfectly forward. And so if we look at this, that original joint chain, still here, is pointing perfectly forward. If I look at this in my front view, we have this bend, but if I look at it in the, let's say the right view, it's perfectly straight. And it's that bend in the front view that lets Maya know which way you want your knee to bend. So if I grab my IK handle and move it, um, it will always bend in the direction of the initial curve in that uh, in that joint chain. This arrow is pointing toward that initial curve and when we do twist we are just changing the direction it is aiming. So we're going to use this whole system the joint chain and the IK to rig our robot in the next video.